Don't get me wrong. Keep going, Matt. Matt. There we go, Matt. Come on. Good job, Matt. Keep going. Keep going. Yep. Keep going. Yep. Keep going. Yep. Yep. No. 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 And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have learned 1.5 million people. Sometimes we need to just shut up. Charges are possible after a viral online post accused a state trooper of sexual assault. Newly released body cam video clears him of the crime. And tonight, social media is changing its tune. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, one of this person might be Sharita Dixon Cole. She's a special woman. And this is a very special situation in Texas where all the right wingers live. And let's just say the police officer thought, hmm, she's driving in a weird way, let's check her. Not because she's black, because it's already night, everybody is black. <laughs> 30 Sunday morning, the state trooper pulled over Sharita Dixon Cole on suspicion of drunken driving. She tells the trooper she's coming from downtown Dallas where she only had one drink and she's driving to her fiance's house in Waxahachie. During a field sobriety test, the trooper pours out two bottles of alcohol he found in her back seat. He places Cole under arrest and asks her to sit in the front seat of his patrol vehicle. But anyway, she goes to jail. They bail her out. Life is Gucci. <laughs> Hours after her arrest, well-known civil rights activist Sean King wrote on Facebook and Twitter, this woman was kidnapped and raped by a Texas state trooper. King included a detailed explanation of the claims as explained by Cole and her attorney Lee Merritt. I mean, that thing went wild in the newspaper. Black woman reportedly kidnapped Gagadunshi by a right winger cop during traffic stop. I'm exaggerating, but that's the emotion that I'm feeling from them. Don't blame Sean King. He's just a black activist, but she and he, the lawyer, gave the information and you got to believe these people right but the thing is um the state trooper um they have body cams and she didn't know that <laughs> and they released two unedited footage Woo! grab your popcorn woman by the name of sharita dixon cole who's 37 years old got arrested for drinking and driving in the state of texas now after she got arrested she hired an attorney and alleged that the uh, individual who arrested her, who works with the Texas Department of Public Safety, assaulted her, sexually assaulted her during the arrest. She claimed that the trooper repeatedly told her he would let her go in exchange for sexual favors. When she said no, she claimed the trooper sexually assaulted her. And that's according to, her, uh, to a statement from her attorney on Monday. Well, now we have some evidence of what really happened. Luckily, uh, there was body camera footage that showed uh, the entirety of the arrest, and uh, the cops decided to release two hours of that footage, unedited, to show us what really happened. And it turns out that she lied. Now, we're not going to show you the two-hour footage, but we're going to show you a snippet of it. Take a look. How much alcohol have you consumed this evening? One. Just one? What was it? Vodka and Okay. Thank you. I also see there's a couple of containers of alcohol in the back seat. It looks like wine and Yes, uh, I'm bringing that from groceries to my house, to his house. In all honesty, not for the alcohol, but for all that garbage in the back seat, she should have been arrested. Ma'am, you're being placed under arrest for driving while on top. You're being placed under arrest. Face towards, keep facing towards my car. Uh, you can go ahead and sit up here. I'm going to reach around and buckle you in. Okay, so JR pointed this out to me and I wanted to also point it out to you. In the end of that video, you can see how the cop pulls the seatbelt and he's so careful to not touch her in any way. The poor is lava! I mean, the way that he handled that situation was perfect. He was respectful. He didn't touch her in any type of way, you know, that could be questionable. He handled that perfectly. And to know that he was victimized, potentially victimized um, with serious charges if he wasn't wearing that camera like
that camera provided evidence that he did nothing wrong. Let's be honest, the way he pulled the seatbelt over her was so nice and amazing. He reminded me of the king putting the shoe on Cinderella. <laughs> Go directly to jail. But wait, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever hire Lee Merritt? No. Did anyone from your family ever retain or hire Lee Merritt? No. You know, I was wrong with running with this information that, that I received from her boyfriend. Merritt says he initially heard of the rape allegations from the boyfriend. He has since apologized for his role in publicizing it, but he insists he was Cole's attorney and showed us a text message from her boyfriend authorizing him to speak after he says he met them in person. An extremely detailed play-by-play -play of the supposed assault that Merritt released on Twitter could only come, he says, from what she recounted. Things that she told directly to me. The Ellis County DA isn't pursuing charges against Cole because she never filed an actual complaint. The office did say in a statement that while in custody, she made, quote, detailed false claims about the trooper. Whose fault is this? White people. I don't feel like it's anyone's fault. I feel like I definitely have to take accountability on my actions. During our interview, the woman stopped short of directly apologizing to that trooper, a man thrust into the spotlight for simply doing his job. But to say it's not anybody's fault, I would say it's three people's fault for sure. But you apologize. But a bunch of people are like, don't blame her, don't charge her. And they didn't charge her. And everybody's like, it's the right decision. It will never happen again. All of the news media coverage is about uh, this false report, which we know is so incredibly rare, that, that reinforces to a survivor that, oh my gosh, if I do come forward, um, I'm not going to be believed. Or people are going to say that what happened to me um, is not significant. That, I think, is the real message, is we want to make sure that we're creating a culture where survivors feel like they can come forward and that they will be believed. But the problem is this, the collateral damage that if we don't believe the woman, she can still get a job. But the collateral damage if we don't believe the man, he will not get a job. That's the problem. The stigma is bad, but one is way more affected than the other. So in other words, ladies and gentlemen, they don't always go free, but some do. I don't have children, but I think they are the most important things in the world. They are the most important things. So when someone has pictures of children being raped and then they don't spend a single day in jail, I don't understand how that's justice. And I'm really upset. Because like I said, I think children are the most important things in the world. And I'm angry, and that's why I'm crying. I'm so angry because it's frustration, and it's like, what what can we do? What can we do about it when we don't have a justice system? When they'll lock people, like you go out and you protest and you get angry or you make threats against people, they'll come and lock you up. They'll come and lock you up for saying something. There are people sitting in jail because of Facebook posts right now. Like literally sitting in jail for two years, three years. Some of the people that follow me and this fucking guy has got off and the people that sent him, the person that sent him the pictures has got off. Are we gonna protect the children? I never ever thought in my life I'd ever post a crying video, but I can't say this with any composure right now. Mm -mm. How did a gangster person with child videos of six, nine year olds get away with any single day in jail? Is this establishment trying to demoralize us this much? I've been saying that so many times. I guess I'm a tarot card reader and I can see the future. I'm not even sure if this is true, but it feels like they put people with those situations in power because they can control them better. Hugh Edwards, um, a suspended prison sentence is still a pretty tough sentence. Let me get this straight. A person that gets a suspended 
sentence is still gangster, but a person that put a post on the internet can get almost two or three years. A person that shouts to a dog can get a bunch of months, more than a year. What the heck is wrong with you, Kay? So I'm going to call. You've pulled me over. You've pulled me over. Right? When I'm on my way to an hospital appointment because I beeped, right, coming in from a junction at a man who was crossing the road who didn't look. You'll see on that video recording and you're taking me to court for that. Is that correct? Is that correct? Is it correct? It's a, it's a, it is a question that I want you to answer. Is that correct? You're taking me to court because I came in from a junction and a male was crossing the road, right? Didn't look and it'll be on your video and I beeped and you've pulled me over and you're taking me to court. Is that correct? Yeah. Thank you. I'm not sure what the heck is happening, but it does feel like a demoralizing campaign because certain people want to distract you with confusion. Are we the baddies? Because if you send so much money to help other people in Ukraine and you tell me that my grandpa might die of cold this winter, yeah, I'm quite confused. Don't get me wrong, my boss a guitar bong. Put the fire na mi blonde, push hash purple skunk, Rio, Yo, Colombici, jam jam, dur loqueta, verdeta, welcome.